Monday, Chinch, let's go. You Fun day Monday. Was, I know, was I was like, I was like what's so the... locked in? You thought you got a whole Monday out of the way and you're ready to rock. You do the cold plunge Dude, I got the, or something? I got the Peloton and the cold plunge. You got your cold plunge in, didn't you? Well, yeah, poor man's cold plunge in my shower. That's right, dude. That's how you start. That's how it starts. <laughs> it starts. Hey, listen, we got great topics today. And if I read them down the line, it sounds like the most insane topic ever because it's fam fought Scherzer. <laughs> so do fam fought Scherzer. I yeah, love it, dude. I love it. Let's just put it this way: Tommy Fam didn't actually fight Scherzer, but those right. are the three people we're talking about. And Fought's yeah. name is spelled differently than Fought. Uh, yes. Okay. Let's get right into it, dude. Because the first topic is fascinating to me. It, most of the people have seen it by now, but Maddox, when Tommy Fam got picked off second base the other night said something extremely derogatory that was caught on film. <clears throat> Tommy Pham never won to back down from an actual fight. <laughs> right. He's like, I saw that. Just give me your whole take on, on how this, this this is like drama, World Series drama. Oh, my or gosh. Or are we making it World Series drama? Oh, yeah, we're making a World Series drama because, well, you know, hey, listen, there's not a ton to talk about. Any storyline out there is good. I think uh, one guy you don't want to rally up is Tommy Pham, too. Jock Peterson found that out a couple of years ago in fantasy football. Oh, you know right, what I mean? But right. um, <clears throat> fam's been swinging the bat well, which has been great. But it, this just goes to show you, dude, <clears throat> cameras are everywhere. They catch everything. There's so many angles. <clears throat> you can rewind things now. It's just ridiculous. So Mike Maddox, what did he, you know, I, I know, I, I, can't, I don't know if I can say what he said, but he was like, boy, you, you know, DF, Billy you know, he said, yeah, <laughs> yeah you are dumb, you know, but you know, here's the dude, here's the deal, bro. And you know it as well as I know it of guys in sports. You're in the other dugout. He's not saying anything to Tommy fam. He's saying, I mean, I'm telling you, we, we I had so many instances too, where guys would have bad base running mistakes and I'd be in the dugout. I mean, thank goodness they didn't have a camera on me in the last <laughs> few months. Cause I hundred percent would have been a gif. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because, dude, you're in the dugout. You're in the fight, dude. You're 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 just rattling stuff off and you're saying stuff. You know. So, that's not to me. That's not directed towards Tommy Fam. It's directed towards the moment. It's directed towards yeah. When a guy gets picked off, I'm sorry. You feel that way? Like, what are you doing? Right. You know, where's he going? That's the one. The one thing in those dugouts is when a guy makes a base running blunder, you're like idiot you know we we all feel that way so out of boy harper that was yeah. the whole thing in analysis. Oh, there you go there you go it's the harper thing out of boy harper right you go back to arcia you know and then and and harper use it as a chip so hey bottom lines we'll see if tommy fam can use it as a chip maybe he does maybe he doesn't maybe he dominates maybe he doesn't who knows but at the end of the day you know you don't want to give anybody any more fuel right now you know to get them going but but yeah. like i said man I don't the Mike Maddox thing, dude. I get it. I'm sorry, dude. I get everyone in that dugout is saying that. You just don't want to get caught on camera. <laughs> yeah, just don't get caught. <laughs> That's a good point. You know, Tommy Fan, I'm I'm so like uh happy for him because again, he's been playing with a chip on his shoulder his whole career. He keeps <sighs> betting on himself when he doesn't think he's getting paid enough and at different stages of his career. And now he's kind of a I don't say I don't want to say high enough. He's one of the leaders on that team. Here's an example. I don't know if you saw this, but people, fans especially, were complaining because he was four for four in that game, had a chance to go five for five in a World Series. Right. It was pinch hit for by uh by Peterson. And everybody's like, How could yeah. you pinch hit? How could you pinch hit? And he came out and goes, No, no, no. Everybody stop with this narrative. He went to the coaches. The game was out of hand. He walked up to the coaches like, Hey, get Peterson in a bat so he has an a bat in a World Series right now. Yeah. At least get him his shot right now. That's that's almost like coaching. Like, hey, get your feet wet, you know, dip, yeah. dip your toe in the pool because we might need you later on in the series. That's a leader. 
right there. Yeah. yeah. Tommy Pham gets it, man. He's a, he is a leader. And Tori Lovello says since he's been over here, he's been a big leader. Hey, he's a big voice. He's a big personality. And gets his boy Jace Peterson in a bat that he'll never forget in the World Series because maybe that moment doesn't come up again. I mean, I think Tori Lovello said if it's 7-1, to one, yes. If it's 7-2, to two, probably not. I mean, that's how, right. you know, that's how close it was. So Pham knew the time was right. Gives me the chills, man. And that's what it's all about. You know, you're, you're with those guys all year long. You, those, are your, those are your buddies. Those are the guys you grind with every night. You spend more time with them. You do your family. Like, if you can get, grab your teammate and say, hey, man, go get in a bat. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for your World Series time. Like, that's a leader. Like, a, a leader a leader isn't, that, you know, I, I, sometimes they're, hey, what are the definitions of a leader? No. You know what a leader is? A leader is someone that treats you the way you want to be treated. A leader is a guy that's respectful. A leader is a guy that leads by example. He goes out and plays the game hard. Or, he, you know, a leader treats other people well. A leader makes you feel good about yourself. A leader pats you on the back when you're struggling. A leader is a, is a person that, that leads the way, you know. And, and leaders lead from the front. You know what I mean? And, and like, when it, a guy like Tommy Pham... I'm, I'm right behind Tommy Fan. Like, if he's rolling, I'm rolling with him because he's got courage. He's got passion. He's got resiliency. He's got tenacity. That's what you think of when you think of Tommy Fan. So, you know, uh, you know, I, I love what Tori Lovello said. Like, yeah, he came up to me in the dugout and was like, I want to get Jace Peterson at bat. So, good for Tommy Fan. Four for four. He's also been huge this whole postseason, man. I interviewed Tommy Fan back when he was with San Diego a few years ago, Chinch. Um, I believe it was right before COVID. And uh, one of my questions was, "Him, hey man, wherever Tommy Fam goes, Tommy Fam wins. Wins. Why is that?" And he's like, "I'm a winner." He goes, "I expect to win. I want to be. I want to be around that culture. When I'm when I'm in, when I'm on a team, I win." And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but go look at every team Tommy Fam has been on. Has won. Yeah, yeah. And, and not only that, it wasn't working out for the Mets. And of course, some New York reporter like. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> puts a puts a uh, microphone in his face to kind of get some trash talk from from the Mets season how bad it was and he was like stop right there don't talk about them like that they got guys over there they're gonna win they're gonna figure it out you don't often hear that from the guy that gets traded away from a team again yeah like he said winner quality well, Chicks, that's a great point because you know what it's when things are going wrong shows who your true character is mm. we're we're all we're all the best ever when things are going right for us right. Sure. It's when we get our feathers ruffled a little bit shows who we really are. So Tommy fam, Hey, we don't want you over here. We're going to trade you over to Arizona. Hey, what about the Mets? What do you think? Hey man, they're grinders. They're working. They're, they're working. They're, they're doing the best they can. It wasn't their year. They're going to get it going next year. Bam mm -hmm. character in a place where he could have totally taken a shot at them and doesn't. I love it. I love me some Tommy fam right now. I didn't know Monday morning. I was come out with a <laughs> love fest for Tommy yeah. fam, but I love it. Good job, Tommy Fam. All right, so now to the fought part of the Fam fought Scherzer section of the thing. You yeah. noticed something, or well, you might have been reading about this, whatever. But you you actually got to put a hitter's meeting together when you knew you were going to be facing fought during the yeah. season with the Yankees, and now he's made some adjustments. Go ahead, t tell us what. you Well, learned, listen, you this is a, this is a game of adjustments, brother. This is a game we all know that, especially at this level, because if you don't make it's a small tweak here and there that can make you. Uh, you know, make you an all-star or make you a minor leaguer. It really is. But you got to find a way to make those adjustments and you got to have the right coaching. Um, Brandon fought was getting, cru I think he had a nine ERA and then he got sent down and he was up and down and, and uh, Brent Strom, the pitching coach for the Diamondbacks, who's one of the best in the business, man. Strom's the, you know, his track record's incredible too, right? What he's done. So him being over there with Arizona has been absolutely huge. But what he did was, and I noticed this when I did the hitters meeting, we played them one of the last games of the series of the year with the Yankees in, in September. He, Strom moved him from the third base side of the rubber to the first base side of the rubber. And you might not think that's that big a deal, but that's, you know, you're, gonna, you're talking three to four inches probably, right? Well, what it did, <clears throat> what it did, Chinch, was... He started to develop a, a, a he started to develop a, a two seam fastball to lefties, right? And his sweeper and his slider to righties became more effective because it gave him three and four more inches on that on that side, right? On the on on the glove side, right? So so a righty, you know, the angle was when he was on the first base side. Yeah, face me. It face, would face the camera when you 
Get your stance. Right there, yeah, yeah. When, when you saw a righty when it was on the when it was on the um on when he's on the first base side, that ball would tick back and go from a ball to a strike, right? So it would come in as a righty, a ball to a strike. Here it is, and I could just crush it, right? Mm -hmm. Now what's happening is, and this is what great pitchers do. This is what elite pitchers do, and this is what Brandon Fox starting to realize. Pay attention to the pitchers in the big leagues, bro. They don't want to throw strikes. Mm. They want to throw strikes early, and they want you to chase. That's their whole goal. But the reason they're big leaguers is because they make the strike look. Like, they make the ball look like a strike. Mm. So what he's doing now is being on the third base side. That slider and sweeper that comes in and goes away from the the right handed hitter mm. looks like a strike till the last second, and it's a ball. Gosh. But it's getting chase, and that is making him an, an, a, such a better pitcher. Hmm. So he's getting chase on the slider and sweeper because of it. he's on the thir uh, first base side of the rubber now. He used to be on the third base, yeah. and he's also using the two seamer against lefties, uh -huh. right, to get them off. And he can still bury that slider sweeper in there, and he still has an upper nineties heater. Yep. So he can he can r work that upper rail <laughs> with with the fat with the four seamer. And then he could crisscross the plate, dude. It's an incredible adjustment. And one of the things I loved, one of the quotes that he had was, and I love this, man. All of us out there, at the end of the day, you know, life is not 10% uh, what happens to you and 90% how you react. Mm. The, only, the only control we have in life is how we respond to things. That's the bottom line. So things are going to happen, good, bad. You're going to get sent down. You're going to dominate all this stuff. Well, when he got sent down, he could have gone to the corner, sucked his thumb, going to poopy pant land, and been like, you know what? Can't believe they don't like me. I can't believe I get sent down. Maybe I'm not good enough, blah, 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 blah. No. He said, what's the adjustment I need to make? This is a positive for me because I can go down now. I don't have the pressure of being in the big leagues. I can really work on some things. I can get my work in. I can get my process in, maybe find a new routine. I can see what it's like. To, uh, to get on that first base side of the rubber, see how, uh, start working a little two seamer. Let me find out what grip I need to use. What's the pressure I need to put on it? What's the spin rate? Can I get on it? <clears throat> and he did all these things and went down. Next thing you know, his response was one of, I'm staying positive. Mm -hmm. I'm staying, I'm staying tenacious. I'm going to continue to have courage down here. And all of a sudden, what happened? He comes back up to the big leagues with renewed confidence because that started to work in the minor leagues. And he, dude, in this second half, he as a matter of fact, when I did the hitters meeting with the Yankees and we were going over Brandon Fott, you know, I was looking at his numbers going, wow, you know, this guy's numbers aren't that great. And Brett Weber, who's, uh, you know, one of the best guys uh, who does a lot of the analytics for the, um, for the Yankees, he was the one that, that told me, hey, listen, <clears throat> He's having more success now on the first base side of the rubber. Mm -hmm. So we started to look at it. We're like, wow, this stuff's playing good. So we went through the meeting. Dude, fought, pitched well against us. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we, we got him a little bit, but his stuff was better than what his numbers had shown. Wow. So when I saw him this postseason, everyone was like, well, Brandon fought, look at his numbers. I'm like, no, that's so deceiving. That's Those trick. numbers are just that first half was so bad. The second half was better, and he's even getting better. So I, it's just it's fun to watch, man. That's awesome, dude. That's good analysis right there. Yeah. That's a that's like you should be the hitting coach for the New York Yankees. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, moving on to the fan fought Scherzer. It's Scherzer time. Dude, cool no, note. I hadn't even thought about this because we, we remember Scherzer so much as like a tiger than that. You forget that he was a D-back, right? Yeah. Starting in the World Series on the same mound where he debuted. 15 years ago at the start wow. of what is 100% a Hall of Fame career, correct? Wow. Oh, dude, 100% Hall of Fame career. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, isn't that incredible, man? Crazy stuff. He stat, started dude. off with the Diamondbacks, and here he is back with them. 15 uh, years later, man. You say it's hard three. to get back there. Between like him and Longo and guys like that, pretty amazing stories. That's a good S part of the World Series. Of yeah, it's so cool, man. I'm sure Scherzer's going to have – listen, you don't forget that. You still – I'm 49. I still feel like I, I was just called up to the big league. So, you know, those memories, those memories are in your mind. So 15 years for him, he's still in the league. Dude, he's going to feel like he's going to have the, the, the jitters of, wow, this is where it all started for me. There's going to be some nostalgia, no doubt, in uh, in how Scherzer feels, um, you know, with this, with this game three. But, 
You know, I think one thing is you, you gotta you gotta look at what does he have? Six and two thirds innings. Yep. He's given up seven runs. Yeah. So you know he he really he hasn't been locked down. Six and two thirds in a month, month and a half. Those in two starts during the ALCS has given up. Yeah, has allowed a lot of seven runs. So I think he was better his second start. Will he be better in his third start back? I think so. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I think Max is one of the best pitchers of all time. Like we said, he's he's on the Cooperstown road 100%. There's no doubt he's going to be in Cooperstown. Um, but I guess the biggest thing is wh- who's going to show up tonight. And I think the with Scherzer, it's. Does he have life on his fastball so he can wipe out, you know, so he can wipe you out with the slider changeup? I think that's the biggest thing. So we'll see. We'll see early. We'll see early what kind of stuff he has. Because like I said with Fought, what made Fought so good is is right now is he he throws the strike to ball. That, and that makes you an elite big leaguer. Matt, nobody does it better than Max Scherzer. Right. In this guy's career, that slider looks like a strike at 55 feet and at – at 57, it starts leaving you, and the hitter's already committed. <clears throat> the changeup has such great fade on it and such great arm action that when it's when it's right down the middle, it looks like a two. It looks like a four seam fastball, but guess what? It's not. It's a fade and changeup that leaves you. It's pretty nasty. And that's what he does so well. So we'll see tonight. Can he throw that pitch? That's the strike the ball chase pitch. You'll see it early. If these guys are chasing, you'll know his stuff's on. If they're taking and getting into high leverage counts. It's not on. I love it. He's locked in. Hey, and just one other note. So he has six and two thirds innings pitch, six strikeouts. So like, he's getting his, his stuff is still his stuff is there. He's given up a home run in each game that, that's kind of bit him a little bit. Keeps the ball down, like you said. Like, it, it, like his his stuff is there. It's just a matter of like getting you know, I guess getting some cobwebs off too. I mean, he pitched. Yeah. It was he pitched on nine twelve, and then the next time he started was ten eighteen. Oh, it just so happened to be in a championship baseball game. Right. Yeah. Right. So like, right. And and are you ever gonna bet against him? Never. No. Never, never. in history. The guy pitched on a mound with a broken nose a couple of years ago. Remember that? The guy's Came crazy. Kid. The the other thing is this guy. People forget he bet on himself when he was basically Cy Young Scherzer with the Tigers. He did not sign that contract. He was going into a free agent year, and you tell any pitcher in the world, you better like sign now. You you could blow out at any moment. He pitched an entire season yeah. without the next year's contract and pitched even to the playoffs. And, you know, was. Yeah. Well, was, I think he made himself 60 million. Absolutely. The numbers jumped up. It was incredible. Yeah. Like crazy. Cause it was like 140 to 200 or something like that. Yeah. Like legit. Yeah. Like all because he was like, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to see what I can do. Yeah. And he did it. You know what I mean? It's, it's incredible. But yeah, you were, and that, Chinch, it's a great point, dude. We expect so much out of these guys. The guy didn't pay. It hasn't been a month and a half. You know what I mean? Like five weeks. So maybe tonight being that third start in, now you start to see the Scherzer. And you're right, six and two thirds, six punchies. That's good. The bottom line is in the postseason, you got to keep the ball in the yard. Mm-hmm. You got to find a way to keep the ball in the ballpark. So if he can navigate that and, you know, if the stuff he gives up are singles, and some doubles and keeps the ball in the ballpark, you know, we could see a nice start from Scherzer tonight, game three. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. I need, uh, I need your, I'm in New York, of course, as I always say all the time. In New York. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the concrete jungle wants a new bat. They want a bat oh. in Yankee Stadium. And these rumors are swirling and swirling now. Heyman just said there have not been full hardcore talks yet here, but. Juan Soto is available, or at least being listened to, and the New York Yankees are at the top of that list of potential guys to get him as the former hitting coach of the New York Yankees yeah. baseball team. Your yeah. thoughts on that possibility? I mean, they need it, man. They need a the Yankees need a a big a, a star left-handed bat. You know, if it's not Soto, is it Bellinger? I don't know what it is. You know, I know Cash will probably be on that. And, you know, obviously they're having talks right now to figure that out. <clears throat> but for me, a guy like Soto, who's, what is he, 24 years old, 24 years old, 25 years old? I mean, this would be the guy for me. For the New York Yankees, because I look at that, I look at what they have, and you see Judge and Cole, you know, the the window the window is the, probably the next six years. Hmm. So, you know, you need 
another star player, I believe, a lefty, a left-handed hitting bat. This would this would help so much, and you know that it would make that lineup so much longer if you get a star left-handed bat. So for me, when I look at it, man, whatever it would take to get a guy like Soto in into in New York, and then you'd have to, you know, you obviously you're going to lock him up because he's your, you know, future guy along with Judge and Judge and Cole. Uh, I love it, man. I love it. I mean, they would they would go. They, that that would be such. It would be such a grand slam for them to get a guy like Juan Soto. Yeah, dude, I did not. I, I was not paying enough attention to his numbers this year, and you know, really needed a kind of a bounce back year. He only played fifty two games last year. He played one hundred and sixty two games in his twenty age twenty four season, by the way. So next year he's only going to be twenty five. Right, like your son, like another one of these players that could be your son, Sean. Right, right, exactly. Two games, seven hundred eight plate appearances, led the league with one hundred and thirty two walks, hit two seventy five, which is kind of below what he would normally be. But how about a career high thirty five homers, one hundred nine RBIs, on base four ten, slugging five nineteen, OPS nine thirty. He's back. Like wow. it's not like, and he's. He's only he just finished 24 years of his life. I'm like, when I was 24 years old, do you know how stupid and I'm <laughs> not good at my job I was? I know this guy is one of the best people at his jobs. Very jealous. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Now, now I'm mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't you be hitting tanks in the big leagues at 24? You know, what the heck's going on? I know. I know. Oh, so. like, what were you doing at 24, Chinch? 24 i was in bristol connecticut working on baseball tonight with our boy Rowan back <laughs> you and roni you and roni like hey we going to wendy's after the show tonight because it wasn't there like a wendy's i was like there's nothing much McDonald's. not much in bristol but there's a wendy's no mcdonald's across the street McDonald's. there was a mcdonald's across the street uh there was some wings place like a, a half a town over but like I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to get people from that area mad at me right now. Not telling you, but I think I'll just say it this way: it was it was cold a lot <laughs> in Bristol. The winters are very cold. That's that's about it. But yeah, at 24 years old, I was making like 17 dollars an hour trying to make a living as an ESPN production assistant with like no benefits. This guy's this guy's making 250 million dollars. He's going to wind up making 500 million. Anyway. Dude, what? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I think it was this year, early on this year, he he came out the gate scuffling, mm -hmm. and it was and he, go again. He lost, dude. It. He could, dude. He could not. It, it, Juan Soto's Juan Soto because he goes the other way, but he couldn't get the other way swing going, mm -hmm. and he was gr hitting so many ground balls to the right side, and then you saw it about. I think it was about middle of May or or beginning of June, he started going the other way again, opened up the pull side for him, and became a monster. Yeah, man. Phew. Wow, think about the guys who have left Washington, you know? Harper, okay. Turner, <laughs> Soto. Yeah. Just uh, no wonder. Right there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, yeah, anyway. And what they, what they wanted in 2019, Harper wasn't there, though. Harper was in Philly. Correct, correct. You know, so I, that's why, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for Bryce Harper at some point to win a World Series, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Next year. Yeah. Next year. Do you think they bring back Nola? I think they will. I mean, if they have the finances for it, I don't think they. I don't. I think it's a no-brainer. He's like part of the, that fabric of that franchise right yeah. now. Don't you think? Yeah, homegrown. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think so. But it's gonna be a dude. It's a big pay. It's a big paycheck, man. No, it's hard. You just locked up Turner. You locked up Schwarber. You locked up Real Muto. Yeah. <clears throat> you locked up Harper. Yeah. You know, it's generational money, man. I mean, and and you know, Nola Nola had to fight to like. Everybody loved him, but he was oh, okay. Get better, get better. Now he's like kind of like a chip. He is like that chip. It's very similar uh, to how Zach Wheeler started his career. Wheeler oh, was in New York. Yeah, and it was like, oh, this is our guy. Oh, maybe he's not as good as we thought. Wait, hold on. He is really good. And now it's like, oh, no, this guy's a stud. It's very, very similar path as far as their, you know, not the same stuff, but the same type of. Like, no, it's true. No, oh, dude, it's so that? true. That was a good pull by me. Yeah, great, great pull, dude. Great pull. Nice job. It's because it's uh, uh, the cold plunge in my shower. <laughs> You're ready, bro. You're ready. Yeah. All right. What do you got going on today? Anything? Uh, I'm going to get a workout in right now. I got a buddy of mine. My, my buddy, uh, Michael, Michael Wilcox, is in from, uh, he's an actor out in L.A. Good, uh, And he's coming in for, uh, he's in town for lunch today. So I'm having lunch with him. And Nice. Yeah, just. Uh, Where do you go to lunch here? I'm just going to have him over, have a couple steaks at the oh, house. Yeah. 
Oh, that's a good move. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, dude, let's let's have lunch. Come to my house, Casey Cafe, we call it. <laughs> Come to the Casey Cafe. Cafe. You want some good food? Casey Cafe <laughs> has you locked down real nice. Oh, I'm looking at his IMDB DB page. He's, he's done a lot of stuff, this dude. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, know, Michael, know. Michael, Michael Nizu is his, is his, that's his Hollywood name. Yeah, Michael yeah. Nizu. N A I Z U, I believe. Yeah. Well, how do you know him? Look him up. Dude. He, I, know, I know. Yeah. I know exactly. Well, incredible is. story. Let me know really quick. Let me tell you how I know oh. Michael Wilcox, Mike yeah, Nizu. Please. So, dude, first off, he's one of the best athletes here in Upper St. Clair. Really? But back when, dude, also his brother, here's another one. His brother, John Wilcox, you're going to hear this name, dude. I promise you. There's a band called November Blue, okay. and his brother, John Wilcox, is incredible guitarist and lead singer, dude, like legit really? as they come. So you'll hear that name at some point, John Wilcox. Now his brother, Mike Wilcox, who's now Michael's Nizu, and I get on him all the time, like, dude, I can't call you Nizu. Like, you're, you're Willie. You'll always be Willie to me. <laughs> so, dude, one time there, we were at a, we were at a, um, block party here in upper st Clair, and i got and my daughter jillian's probably like eight, six months old and we're over there and these kids are this like these kids is a 15 year old kid john wilcox who i, I don't know these guys yeah. they're on gu guitar and mike wilcox is on piano he's playing like <laughs> keyboard they hired him for like the the, the, the block party so yeah. i went up to him i was like hey you guys know night moves you know bob Seeger? yeah, yeah. So I, I see him, I'm going, hey, dude, Sean Casey, Sean Casey, Sean Casey wants to hear, Sean Casey, I hear him talking to each other, Sean Casey wants to hear Night Moves, you, you know how to play that? And he's like, not really, he's like, all right, let, let's see, let's give it a rip. I was like, just give it a rip. Dude, they start playing Night Moves, it was incredible, and like, you know, Mike Mike brought it up on his podcast, on his uh, uh, oh, iPad, okay. ended up singing, dude, so anyway, <laughs> after that, his brother John, who's like 15, Mike was like a senior, and he's like, hey, man, he's like, my brother's a big baseball fan, a big wow. baseball player. You know, he'd love to hit with you. It was like, he was like his, his messenger. <laughs> I go tell him I'll hit whenever he wants. So dude, I end up hitting with Mike. Well, he ended up going to Penn state playing two years of baseball. Really? And then he went out to LA and he's, he's been an actor out there and he's, and he, dude, he's in a few commercials. He's in the, uh, Oh gosh, state farm, uh, state farm commercial. He's in a couple commercials that, you know, I doubt have yeah. seen him like big time commercials. Handsome fella. Oh yeah, good looking dude. Really good looking dude, dude. I mean, <laughs> ridiculously good looking. Yeah. Wow, well, pretty. Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. Give me so he's coming over for lunch. I'm making him a nice New York strip at the Casey Cafe. You know what I'm saying? Casey Cafe, I love it. All right, cool. Yeah. I'm what are you, what trade, are you doing, bro? Trade deadlines tomorrow in the NFL, so I'm grinding today. Wait, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thirty third team. You're locking it in. I will say this here. Here, uh, a little tease. I was told by somebody who's a very, very, very solid insider. Expect no less than eight. <clears throat> Fairly big deals in the NFL over the next day or two. Wow. Heard it here on a mayor's office first. I don't know. Let's go, Chitch. Oh, let's go. Yeah. All right. So let's get after it. All right, All right man. Well, yeah, we didn't talk much NFL, but we'll, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. All right, bro. Love you, man. Have a great rest of the day. Everyone out there, thanks for listening. We'll see you manana.